This is the Amp Hour Podcast. Released July 24th, 2022. Episode 597. Wow, Dave really likes Top Gun. Welcome to the Amp Hour. I'm Dave Jones from the EEV Blog. And I'm Chris Gamble of Contextual Electronics. I am hip with the kiddies. I am down with the latest tech. I have augmented reality glasses. Yeah, you're living in the future, man. Yep. You are future man. <laughs> and, and But as I said on Twitter, I put the glasses on and Twitter still sucks. So yeah, maybe I'm using them wrong. I don't, uh, anyway, yes, I've got the Tilt 5. Glasses. I get Jerry Ellsworth's. I was a backer and I finally got my backer kit mm. and she included some extra set as well for teardown, like a older set. I think it's a, like a more proto in kind of one that I can do a teardown. So I expect to see a teardown video, but I've got it right in front of me here. If you, so uh, I'm trying to remember like yeah. the timeline. So we had Jerry back on. I, uh, that was yeah. four years ago. That was May 2018. Seriously? Wow. Yes, seriously. Oh, is that when... <laughs> You you backed that was they shut down the original Kickstarter and they, they started shut, a new well, one. Well, no, it, well, she was at Valve and then she left yeah. Valve and formed Cast AR, right? I yeah, think this I is the that. timeline. Yeah. And then yeah. Cast AR uh, spectacularly Floated. failed, and that's yeah. why we had her on the show to talk about why and how that failed, and that has to do with right. I don't and know that, all sorts of politics. Oh, and that's and when they they had given investor. back all the money. They had Cast AR had raised the money. Yes. Oh, that's right. Did yeah. Cast AR do a? Yeah, Cast AR did a. Yes, Kickstarter, that's right. did they? And they, yeah, but they yeah. gave the money back, which was yep. un, unheard of, right? And that was like, right. yeah, because well, they like raised a bunch of venture yep. capital as well. Venture capital. So she deliberately, I think, kept the money, the Kickstarter money aside, just in case, just in case for that eventuality that it, yeah, yeah. it failed because of venture capital politics or something. I, I can't remember. We'll have to listen to the episode that's again. Bonkers. But four years ago. Yeah, that was four, was four years ago. Well, that was it was before that because we had her on after. I'm not sure how long after Cast AR failed we had no, her on, really? but she had just formed Tilt 5. Well, no, no. This The episode I'm talking about is Jerry Ellsworth, number 394, uh, Jerry Ellsworth and Devise, Demise of Cast AR. We will link in, of course. Yes, and the Demise that of Cast AR. That was May of 2018. Yep. So yep. That, that was after, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that was after it failed. But was that before? But she had already started Tilt Five. Then she had just no. Started, then it took a while to build no? to buy the to buy the assets. I believe. I think she bought the right. assets much, like a year or two later. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Valve gave her the the IP to start Cast AR, and then yeah, didn't yeah, she might have had to buy them back or something. No, no, yeah. no, no. Yeah, it's that's right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Valve gave her the IP that it was Cast AR, and then when that shut down, then she bought the IP. She bought the IP. Okay. From yep, the that guts sounds of familiar. Cast AR yep. for Tilt 5. Got it. So when did you order? When did you put in the backing support? I have no idea. I can't remember oh. the time. Like I'm sorry. I can't remember yeah, the time. Yeah. Look, I can do, maybe I can do a quick. You know, folks, no, this, no. Is, this is the first sign of, of an aging brain. <laughs> well, it's been like, I'm sure it's like three years or something. It's at least a couple of years. I can I can search my Gmail is probably the yeah, best probably it, way yeah. to do it. And so yeah. I'll search Tilt 5, Tilt 5 project update in 2019. Uh, October, September 2019 is when I, mm. you just backed. So September 2019. Okay. There you go. Yeah, I mean, there's a pandemic in there. So, so that's almost three years. That, that, yeah. That's almost three years because it's almost the end of July now. Mm. August, so yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, and I'm on the Tilt 5 <laughs> site, and it says, now fulfilling orders to Kickstarter backers reserved today and receive the Tilt 5 system in winter. So it sounds oh, like they right. have new stock, actually. Oh, they have new. Right, I was going to say, I was going to ask about like the component shortage and stuff yeah, like that, but yeah. yeah. And and I got like lots of, like I've got like at least 38 project updates in my oh, wow. email box, and they're the ones I kept, I guess. But yeah, like so constant updates all through, you know, hmm. all throughout this cool. thing. But yeah. So are there like games out of the box and everything like that? I mean, this is like the... Well, I had a few issues. You'll see the reaction video. I'm going to edit it after this. Okay. I did. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work out of the box, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. 
Well, it is a development kit still, right? I mean, I, it it, it is a now. development kit. Well, I, I actually talked to Jerry on uh, Twitter DM in uh, mm-hmm. as I was having issues here. So she was, yeah, yeah. She's she's Johnny on like, the spot, like right? Long, long distance troubleshooting, huh? Yeah, yeah. long distance troubleshooting with users the, uh, with the CEO <laughs> herself, right? With the founder uh-huh, and CEO uh-huh. herself, and she's yeah. she absolutely nailed it from the get go. She said, "Yeah, they're on the edge of what they can do uh, data rate for the USB C connection." So they're on the limits. So I was actually plugging it into the top of my desktop uh, uh, USB 3 port via the mm-hmm. USB-C to USB-A adapter and yeah. the combination of that. And she said over the ribbon cable to the motherboard and everything else, you get a slightly lower data rates and it just doesn't work. You know, it yeah. often doesn't work. Yeah. So you got to go like in the back, the back of so the computer I went, where it's so directly So I flipped my PC onboard. around. I plugged it directly into a USB-C port and it yeah. worked. Bam. So yeah, great, that was non obvious. Because I you know, I knew it would take higher data rate the higher you went, but it was only like at seven twenty P or something. I wasn't like the maximum res mm-hmm. it could do. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but yeah, they're they're actually on the limit of the USB C data rate. So that's yeah. a you know, it's just yeah, sheer processing speed because they've got to keep the frame rate up. Right. Because all of this is, you know. Right, because they they had meant for the the computer or the phone I believe the phone right? there she's working she yeah. says they an Android version will be soon yeah and that will plug into the USB C port of your phone so if you've got right. a grunty yeah, enough phone I don't know it's like a yeah it's like a they wanted to off they they were putting f- less processing on it than I think some other systems were. Right. Maybe that's okay. not right. I don't know. Uh, I don't, I don't really know. Keep it up anyway, a lot of I'll get Jerry. We'll, we'll get Jerry on, and she can talk all about. Yeah, <laughs> she can yeah, go for hours long. and hours talking about the tech. Yeah, 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 the technical development. I mean, and let's be honest. You know, anyone who ships these days, you know, listeners, Jerry, everyone out there who's shipping product, my hat is off to you. It oh is yeah, just no, such, totally. Just just such the act of mess, shipping. You know? The act of shipping yeah. is Shipp- such shipping a- anytime <laughs> is is very impressive, right? Yes, there's a ton to get over. The shortages. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yep. what a mess. Oh, yeah, exactly. But they have been working on this a long time, like um, because they got, I think, $7.5 million venture capital funding or something oh, of, oh, of that order. I don't know if it was more than uh, – that was one of them. I don't know if they got extra mm-hmm. on top of that. But that gave them the luxury to actually spend time to do it properly rather than rush – rush it to kickstarter market because all the you know yeah, yeah and all the kickstarter back is including me you know where we're going yeah you know just just take your time it's fine you know <laughs> <laughs> you know and yeah i'm and, sure that, i'm sure there's one or two people that are a little more oh well yeah, there, there's that always way, grumpy yeah, bastards i backed this two years ago and you haven't shipped that's it right. Um, that's yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah I, I expected a product yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah i'm sure there is it's interesting like how little we hear about like well, at least in my orbit, I'm maybe maybe other people are hearing more. But like mm-hmm. Kickstarter campaigns, you know, like yep. five, six, seven years ago, it was just like, man, every week there was just a new thing and this new huge project. And right, I think for the best that it's cur- curtailed. You know, like it's just kind of a level. It's leveled off. There's still stuff that comes up, and like you know, I get the crowd supply emails. I, I those are probably the ones that are most targeted at me. A little less mm-hmm. consumery, a little more electronicy. But yeah, there's just not as many people doing that these days, it feels like, huh? Yeah, well. Interestingly, somebody asked me on Twitter the other day, what are the what's the biggest lesson that, that I should have, like having a packing and shipping company, like if I'm gonna sell a product, if I'm gonna oh, pack and ship a product. Uh-huh. And and it wasn't, you know, I didn't like Oh no, I think they said online store or something. You know, I want to have an online store and I wanna sell product and stuff like that. And the two things I actually said were A don't underestimate the ability of the customer to screw up their delivery, their own delivery address, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's one. And yeah, uh, yeah. two was don't en- underestimate the inability of the customer to use the niche product that they actually ordered, <laughs> we, w- which included me with this cast AR, right? I just like didn't sure, sure. get it at first, right? I did like, yeah, well, yeah. it didn't work. And that data rate thing was not me, you know, so. It did end up being PebCAC in the end. It, huh? it did, well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I thought it was me at one stage because I didn't follow all the instructions, but, you know, I can't. Yeah. I, yeah. I do find I, I am very impatient when I open things. You know, I think oh, we've, me, me too. we've all yeah, been total. conditioned by like the stuff yes. that is really good or really simple and things like that. Yep. And these days, 
I mean, come on. I put together like a bicycle mm. and like about three quarters of the way through, I'm like, you know, I should probably this. I'm gonna ride <laughs> I this should down, probably I'm gonna ride this down hills yep, in, yep. in the street. I should probably be paying a little uh, more attention. And yeah, you know, it's a good thing I did. I should probably read the instructions <laughs> for this IKEA table I'm trying to. Yeah, right, right. I'm, I'm, gonna, to I'm gonna try right. and put a bit a bunch, of, a bunch of weight on this or something. You yeah. know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Oh boy. Uh, yep. You know, it's just wisdom yeah. it's, a, it's accumulated wisdom yep <laughs> anyway are you going to ask me about the augmented reality experience uh, i kind of figured i'd get it from the video but uh dave what is the augmented reality experience <laughs> it's well it's exactly what i expected like oh, okay. i expected like technically like i'm not wowed by these things. like i like i i hate virtual you don't reality play video games anyways well, so there's no, also well, that I, I kind of uh, well i used to but no i i hate 3d with a passion Right, I hate 3D movies and all the 3D glasses bullshit, sure, sure. and I hate virtual reality. Granted, I haven't tried, you know, the new metaverse BS, right, and the latest goggles and stuff like that. But I generally hate virtual reality. It looks really campy. All the metaverse stuff looks very. Oh, very campy I, I to just me. no, no. But the I'm good like, thing about cast, I AR, wanted Oasis. I wanted Oasis. No, right, and I, I want. Get, I want the if I'm if I'm yes. If you're gonna do I'm, VR, give I'm me getting, the full I'm getting Oasis. like uh, you know Farmville yeah. in 3D right. instead of like the Oasis. <laughs> yeah, instead of the Oasis. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But anyway, no, I, I think it's very cool because you can still see your hands in front of you. You can still see the table. You can still see the room. You can still see yeah. your friends yeah, sitting next to you. You know, you're immersed yeah. more in the experience. And and it's kind of disappointing when I when I not no the, the tech is awesome, right? But it's kind of like I right when I actually put my hand in front of it, it feels like I'm going to be able to pick up that that 3D ball in front of me. Oh, yeah, and I go, yeah. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it and then I get close to it and my hand goes and actually blocks out the ball instead of goes under. Oh, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah. Um, but when I get close to it, like it feels like very 3D. It's it it really is so quite it's immersive. impressive. It's, immersive it's very it, immersive. It's very impressive. Yeah. yeah. You know, all these things like I, so I don't I, I had to give up playing video games a long time ago because I got <laughs> right. really sucked into them. I kind of think about like all of these things like Jerry stuff. It's awesome. Like, you know, the, the VR stuff is awesome, too. And it's like mm -hmm. it's really about is it going to be still on? You know, is it is it in your hands six months from now, a year from now, whatever? And it's exactly. Just like, that is that is test, hard yeah. to do. And that's yep. that's so much that like content and like developing, yep. you know, as much as it pains me to say it, it's not about the hardware. It's about the mm. ecosystem and the software and like the marketing and all the other crap that's in there. Mm. And, you know, I hope they solve that, you know? Well, I, I, I hope this augmented reality, I actually predict this will be quite big. Jerry's uh, product mm. here, this uh, tilt five thing, because it really is quite impressive. You know, I haven't taken it home and shown the kids. I guess the ultimate kids. You know, That'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, sure. You know, does a uh, 10 year old kid think this is cool kind of thing. Sure. Whereas I, I think they'll think this is cooler than the virtual reality. That that would be my guess. Mm. So, yeah. yeah, because like you're actually immersed in the thing and you're sitting around with your friends and you're playing rather than just sure, put the sure. goggles yeah. on and go in your own, you know, universe. No, no, thank you. Well, as much as I am uh, the consummate tastemaker, I have no idea what the public likes. And uh, yeah, yeah, so exactly. <laughs> I think it's, yeah, it's going to come down to, you know, the market. And Well, there are only two texts. There's virtual reality and there's augmented. So I'm, you know. Uh, there's also but, distorted reality. I live in that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's called Twitter. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, <laughs> but no, I think I, I, I like, I think I like augmented reality better because I, I still stay in, in reality, but hey, it's augmented, right? But it, it appears like, you know, the mm. things are in front of me when they're not really there. And that's, that's, it, is, is that like that Pokemon thing i've never actually played a pokemon go or whatever you know you go chasing mm. around bloody pokemon things in the middle of the city or something it's the same yeah, i mean it's the same kind of idea it's like you're looking through a like a yeah. clear glass and it's imposed on top of it so yeah it's the same kind of idea oh okay so can you get uh glasses can you that actually project no 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 it's it's no. on your phone but then it's the on camera your phone, basically is Oh, it's on your camera. So you look into your camera, one. right? And then you superimpose right. it. Oh, I found one. Yeah. And I don't know, you collect points. That's or something. right. Yeah. Rubbish, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Right. I don't know if that's still a thing. Yeah. See, I mean, that's <laughs> extremely popular. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think it is anymore, Dave. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, don't think, I, I, don't, I actually I don't... know people who still play it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, yep. I'm more of a bleeding edge person myself. And uh... right. <laughs> I know someone who's uh, my age. He was actually the best man at my wedding. Actually, he he still uh, no plays way. it. He still oh, plays okay. it with his uh, dad. Him and his dad wow. go out and play it. That's so hey. yeah, I you know <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's so, awesome. Anyway, yeah, that's the augmented thing. I, I think I prefer that, but I don't know. I've yet to try the stupid metaverse, but I'm pretty confident I won't like it. So I'm not, you know, I'm going in with a heavy bias, I'm sure, if I do try it. But yeah, I just hate all that 3D, you know, God, like 3D movies I've always hated. Yeah. The shark always you know, looks fake, you know. The shark always looks fake. <laughs> <laughs> See, you very, wouldn't you I, wouldn't have been around. You did not go to the cinemas and watch no, Jaws 3D, no. right? No, Jaws 3D, no. Jaws no, no. 3D. Jeez, uh, when was that released? Holy crap! Ugh. I uh, I, I thought you might have been segueing. I I wrote a piece. No, just no. today, and yes. I I made some art here. I'll link it to you. So you could see the art. Okay. I was very I was much more proud of the art than the writing, of course. <laughs> right. But. Uh, it was a Got piece it. about uh, Wireshark, and so I I, I stole the oh, Jaws okay. Oh, you stole and, it, uh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All yeah. right. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I never really watched Jaws because I was afraid. 1983, of it. yeah, that yeah, was released. Yeah. I can remember going to the cinema, watching that in 3D and thinking, oh, this is shit. <laughs> this is just, and every 3D movie I've watched since then is just shit. It's just, mm. oh, God, you know, I've seen, like, the uh, Dark dark Knight in 3, I think that was in 3D, wasn't it, at, at the IMAX Oh, yeah, there was something? a while where they were putting everything in there 3D. Was, yeah, everything was 3D, and yeah. 3D TVs with all the rage, and then they died, and then they died. Trying, you know, who buys a 3D TV these days? Totally, right? totally. Yeah, right? Absolutely no one. Who's releasing 3D content anymore? No one. Right? right? No, we're yeah. no, we're we're actually going back to old school. Please tell me, please tell me, you've seen Top Gun Maverick. I have not yet. No. Oh, I'm not, God. I'm not going to movie theaters, Dave. Oh, I, I dude, don't. go see Top Gun Maverick at the theater. I oh, know God. how much of a fan you were. I'm sure my my in laws loved it. Everyone I know, oh. everyone I know, told me it's great. I'm gonna go see it probably on a plane. I'll probably watch no. it. No. No, yeah, sorry, go man. see it I at just, the cinema. Real theaters. music, real sound. sound I don't like... go to theaters. I just not. It's not my thing. Sorry. Why? COVID's still a big thing. Oh, here, so. bullshit. Come on, go to no, the bloody... Is. No, go to the theatre. Oh, for God's okay. sake, you've had it. Go to the theatre. Enjoy I yourself. Know, Family Get rule. back in Sorry. the real world. Oh, God. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no, no. God, you're missing out. Oh, once in a lifetime opportunity you to see first, an old folks. school movie. Dave Jones yep. is a Tom Cruise fan. Und- bloody oath. Undying. Yep. Undying No, it's, 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 he makes good shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's you know it it could have sucked. I did not want a Top Gun sequel. I did not want. I thought no. I no. It's it's just why, why? But he smashed it out of the park. It feels like it's old school, right? It's shot you know with as as much practical effects as you possibly can. You feel like you're actually immersed in it, and it's proper filmmaking, proper storytelling. No politics shoved down your throat. It's bloody awesome. Go watch it. Ah, man. Use Dave's re- referral yep. code here. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, went to see it twice. It's so good. Might go see it again. Just to spite Great. you. Do it. All right. Just do it, man. All right. Go see it once Still on, me. I think. Yep. Yeah. 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 So, you know, like people are ditching this, you know, th- like people ditch the 3D bullshit, right? That Yeah, for years. How many years did 3D reign at the movies, right? Everything was 3D. Now it's like no, none, zero, zip. Right? Yeah, totally. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's died. So will yeah, uh, virtual reality. I don't know. I I think you're right. Right. It has to be the full oasis or nothing. I think it's just yeah. yeah. I think yeah. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know what you do in the in the meantime. So. Yeah. No. Same here. No. It's it's just yeah. I I, I think people will buy it because it's cool. Oh, you play it a few times and then it, you know just sits yeah. in the cupboard. Yep. Right. I think yep. that's totally. yeah. Yep. And so, for people that don't know, we're talking about Ready Player One. Sorry, that Oasis yes. is the, the VR system in that um, in that book, in the movie. Which you did not like the movie. You I panned did. the movie. I, I remember did. you panned in it, dude. It was you good. You know that Spielberg guy? I don't think he has much of a future. <laughs> <laughs> his, his, his career is totally over, right? It's yeah, just, totally yeah. over. Yeah. Never going to get another gig in the business after that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ready to Speaking of things rush. that are totally over, this has been an interesting uh, con- uh, thread on the, on Hacker News, and 
otherwise. There was a there was a red the register.com, which is eh, okay, UK publication. Eh, just okay, I think. Electrical engineers on the brink of extinction threaten entire tech ecosystem. Yeah, what was this? I saw this mention on Twitter, but I didn't delve in. Yeah. Yeah. So basically What is the skinny? Okay, so I think the high level overview is there's an article with the title that I just gave. Yeah. And the real thing is many people, myself included, projected exactly whatever they wanted right. onto that of course, title, yes. right? <laughs> right. And so it was basically like, yeah, ah, software versus hardware. And, you know, don't like, even have to was, read the article. Was just, it was just, me too. Yeah. Just yeah. totally project your own opinions on the Right. <laughs> right. Which is what totally. everyone does when they re- read the yeah, news. I mean, no yeah, one, no one reads the article. article. And, you just need to yeah. read the headline and that's just it. Just need something to, yeah. to grouch about. And that's, that's, you need that's something to confirm your bias. That's what you need. Yeah. That's what Actually, I didn't even about, see you know? that this that this article actually refers to Mike's electric stuff. That's great. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Mike, Maker Culture is alive and well. He refers to Mike's electric stuff. Totally missed that the first time through. Nice. But basically, they're saying EE's on the decline, flat to down, and you know, okay, fine. The thing that got me is uh, a thing that I screenshotted and posted to Twitter and harvested that sweet, sweet karma. And it was someone who said, I I have a PhD in electro- electrical engineering. <laughs> yeah, I switched to yeah, software I and yep. I now change the color of buttons. And yep, it's like, yep. oh my God. Yeah, I know. And it's yeah, like, it's but, but there is some very real truth to, you know, many hardware engineers, probably mm-hmm. many people listening here, people yep. that trained in, a, in electronics or in love electronics, mm-hmm. they went into software just because of the disparity in pay yeah. and, you know, the other opportunities. And it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, that's kind of me these days too. Like I'm doing more software than hardware and, you know, yeah, I think that's just course. a very common thing. That was the 90, that was the basis of like anyone who graduated from like, you know, 1995 to 2005 yep. is like, oh yeah, I'm going to go to IT instead. It's, because it's, it's there's applications on, see somebody, somebody has to build the hardware, right? Someone has to still build the hardware, right? You've got to build the shit. So you've got, right. So you're still going to have that base percentage and that'll stay flat forever, right? Because you still need people to build the stuff that you run your stupid software on, right? But the software is like yeah. infinite. You know, you can do like infinite yeah, you can always do more. You can always yeah, find yeah, other yeah, margin. You can always other... do more. And and the interesting thing about this article, yeah. this is from the IEEE v, VLSI Symposium on Technology. It's a graph uh, which overlays college enrollment computer software versus EEs, and basically goes right back to 1964. And you can see that in 1994 is when it crossed. That, geez, that was what, what was released in 1994, the World Wide Web, right? Mm-hmm. So that was yeah. the, the explosion of the internet, everything else. That's when there was rapid decline in the yeah. enrollments of EEs and rapid increase in the enrollment of yeah, but computer science. Even within this, this graph, many of those EEs were just, you know, there weren't, there weren't computer science programs prior to, the, you know, pretty much the 90s like 80s yeah, yes there were the select, 80s had but not some. in yeah not yeah, in yeah. like the same right. level they are today and and same well no thing. no you, you can see the rapid increase in computer science actually started around 1979 1980 there's a huge ra- in fact the most rapid rate of change on this graph is around 1979 1980 is when computer science exploded but but then it dropped yeah, back the down y, after 1984 y- the Y axis is popularity zero to prove one hundred percent. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we may be working with uh, you know maybe some weird data, but uh. <laughs> well, no. But that's and then nineteen eighty four. What happened in nineteen eighty four? Well, around nineteen was it nineteen eighty four? George Orwell was, the, yeah, uh, right, was right. the video game crash, right? The video game crash, and oh, everyone's not getting into computer science anymore. And then nineteen ninety four, and that lasts for a decade. And then nineteen eighty four comes around, and boom, it goes skywards again but then it drops around you know 2002 something like that ha huh? what what happened around 2001 yeah the dot com bubble 2002 yeah. when it started to drop again dot com bubble yeah, right so yeah it went down yeah, again totally. but not by a huge amount and then it decreased and it started increasing about yeah well that's always lagging too like in yeah. like enrollments and stuff oh like yeah that. yeah of course know. yeah 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 but they um, i mean so part of the part of the thing here is like okay who's going to build the hardware and i think the answer is you know they're gonna it's gonna balance itself out right i don't Mm. i'm not particularly worried about like the fact that there's fewer and fewer things like yeah there's going to be chip designers that are designing you know functionality that maybe you know so like you know the the example that we keep using on this show at least is like jim williams designed a thermocouple 
you know, app note that was like paired all these different things together. And it's just not necessary anymore. Like it's in 20 different chips. You can get a thermocouple of things. No, but it's very necessary. It, in fact, all, you no. know, most of engineering can be no, done from app, na- app notes these days, right? Somebody's still got to write all this stuff. Somebody oh, still has to write do it, the but... base level no, no, design. No, no. Like, I'm, right? I'm talking about the Jim Williams app note where he's p- piecing a bunch of things together to get super precise like thermocouple measurements. And what I'm oh, saying right. is, okay. whereas maybe that was then feeding into you know, 100, 500, 1,000 engineers that also had to go and design bespoke thermocouple systems. Right. Now, the real thing is all of that knowledge has got wrapped up into silicon and packaged up and sold to an engineer. And then that engineer reads just the app note, how to apply it, how to put it onto a board. And then they have that, that functionality on a board. And then right. about a year or two later after they make that board, they're sitting weeping at their desk because they can't get the chips, right? That's the natural way of things, Dave. That's just how it goes. (laughs) It's the natural Um, order. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. But uh, in the serious manner of it, I think there really is like that IP conglomeration into silicon. And so I think because silicon designers are going to keep kind of hoovering up this IP ideas and putting it into silicon and it'll be profitable Mm -hmm. to, you know, sell it to to future engineers. I think that that's going to be fine. I'm I'm not worried about that piece. I think maybe, you know, if we're lamenting like the lack of skills and the ability to go and make one of those circuits like a Jim Williams, just to keep using that, that same example, then that's, yeah, that's, that's legit. Right. But there weren't that many of them in the first place. Yeah. You hinted at this here. It's like, there's a chip for everything these days, right? It's like everything's, everything almost turns into a single chip solution these days, yeah, whether it's an FPGA the, yeah. or whether or not it's a, you know, a custom thing that like real, like gone are the days when you design big rack things with huge, you know, rack cards of seven, four series, bloody logic, right. To actually, you know, to do some functionality, it's all in a microcontroller. Right. It's all in an FPGA. It's all in a custom ASIC that you yeah, buy from right. one of the major manufacturers that does the task th- that you want, right. The, the actual systems engineering, the system design, circuit design mm-hmm. is like yeah gone are the days when you have uh you know a hundred chips on a board name yeah. name a modern design that's got you know a hundred chips on a board it has to be you know fairly niche special not being made right now right <laughs> yeah, well yeah because you can't get any of them right? <laughs> so yeah mm. but it's yeah it's you know it's totally changing yeah. but that that also it enables smaller product right that enables smaller better that consumer does. products etc yeah. etc so yeah, yeah. I think I think that's yeah. right. And I think there are still pockets, you know, so I still have friends at Keithley Instruments and they're still making fancy ass measurement equipment and like yeah. and they're still there. And there's you know, they might be lamenting the fact that there aren't as many young engineers to backfill, but there are some and they're gonna have to mentor those ones up into the company. I think maybe, you know, a bigger risk than a degree program would be the fact that there's higher mobility. And so if you can't hold on to people once you've Hmm. trained and mentored them right because once you mentor someone and then they go off to get a job at you know google doing software or something like that instead because it's a better opportunity yeah they're not coming back there is no you know like that's a one-way ticket i think because i don't that's interesting who who out there leave it in the comments please if you've you know if you're if you're a hardware guy right and then you stray to the software dark side because it paid five times as much have you come Mm -hmm. back who out yeah. there has come back from that? I would say, I, the, yeah, I would be interested to hear that as well. The ones, the anecdotal ones that I hear about, you know, so like I meet people at DEF CON who are doing badges or I'm mm-hmm. meeting people that are like maybe taking contextual electronics almost universally. They're like, yeah, I used to do electronics. I got into software. I really like, I miss electronics. I want to get back yeah. into it. Like that is a, and I, you know, that's probably. Yeah, but the money, the, day, you know, the like, money's usually not there, right? That's, that's which, the problem. I'm not saying right? professionally. I'm not saying hardware. professional. Oh, I'm saying, right. Okay. I'm oh, saying they hobby. get back into Hobby's it. Different. They get back oh, into no. it as a hobby. They get back oh, into no. it as like a, right. maybe I can make this work or maybe I have enough domain knowledge to, you know, build a startup around a piece of hardware. But like, right. they're probably not going back to be, I don't know. I think about, I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you from my own experience, you know, like going from a, a software company back into a hardware company. I mean, technically I haven't done it. I haven't done it. No. Except Mm. if, unless you count my own hardware company, because one of the things that was brought up in the comments, which I think is legit, is getting used to more mobility and like monetary mobility is one thing, but I think physical mobility, like hardware companies are locked to locations 
And that doesn't seem to match a lot of millennial lifestyles, myself included. I should, I right. should you know, put myself in that category. Like I live in Durham, North Carolina. There are a couple of hardware companies around here, but not many. That means I am only able to work for the companies in that area. Whereas, you know, as a software engineer, you, the world is your oyster, especially, you know, maybe during the past two years, it's even, it's hyper, it's, it's even crazier, but like you can work anywhere as a software engineer in theory. Yeah, right. And in, that is in, just in not theory. the case for yep. hardware. So yeah, it's different. Mm -hmm. No, totally. So I don't know. Has anyone come back from the dark side? Uh. Yeah. Well, I mean, the the money difference I think is also it's shocking, but it's a shocking money difference. But it's not shocking that the money is different. It, it, it's that not surprising sense. at all. It's not and surprising. I don't no. see that changing. I I I really don't. So I don't see this problem solving itself. Like you know, basically, if you know, if suddenly hardware engineering became you know, if it flipped around and software engineering paid a pittance and hardware engineering paid a lot, people would flip back. I'm sure, because people I always right. follow the money, and you can't that's actually right. blame them. Right? No. I mean, you no, know, no. someone comes along and goes, you know, I'm going to pay you, you know, three times as much to. It's a market system. Yeah. That's that's fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think there's very, it's very unlikely that the, you know, the high end software arenas of the world will get so flooded that, they're, you know, they've been talking about that for years that, like, oh, salaries are going to come down because there's more engineers entering this field, whatever, you know, they haven't, they haven't filled those jobs yet. So maybe they'll come down at some point, but I never think that hardware is going to catch up. I just don't. No, I don't. I don't that. See maybe, it. I mean, maybe parody for like super, super, you know, like high end analog chip yeah, design. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there are niche examples of, yeah, yeah. of it happening, but generally. someone brought up like Apple iPhone engineers who are working on hardware can get paid close to what a software engineer. Yeah. Right, yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Especially with I equity, that. that kind of thing. Yeah. But that's one company. And that is yeah. not, uh, that's not a one company is not a trend line make. Yep. No, yeah. exactly. You won't get that at Joe Bloggs industrial controls company you know yeah, totally right yeah, yeah. right yeah so yep. <laughs> they're not in the midwest for the for the weather that's for sure even though that, that can be thoroughly interesting work right that can like <laughs> you know you can be working on fantastic stuff and you know oh, sure. yeah but it's sure eh. yep i don't know yeah, i mean it's i don't see it flipping cool. I, I think, you know, just... that, that is an interesting thing to, uh, you know, it's worth reading through these comments. I think it's, it was interesting mm -hmm. comments. It was somewhat voyeuristic on my part reading through these as well. But <laughs> like, I think one of the things that is in that, like just chasing it for the money, right? Not saying that that's everyone there, but you know, if you are just there for the money and then you end up changing the buttons on changing the colors and buttons, <laughs> like I got to say, like blinking an LED still. <laughs> that is a hilarious example. <laughs> right, that's the one that that's on the one that uh, got three thousand likes on yeah, Twitter, yeah, right? It was, yeah, you know, yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah, it's great because it's so yeah. like, you know, mind-numbingly boring, pointed and and job. silly, yeah, yeah. and yet <laughs> yeah. and yet very yet, high. Yet, paid. yet you can actually picture somebody being paid a couple hundred thousand dollars a year to change buttons. You know, yeah. I right, mean, yeah, because right. it actually yeah. has implications. And so this is my yeah. argument is that basically EEs are far away from the money, right? Like you are, mm. say you are working at Joe Bloggs Engineering in, you know, the middle of Wisconsin on industrial controls. Like what is the closest you're going to have at impacting the, like being able to prove you've impacted the bottom line? Like, yeah, yeah right. You zero, know, zero. Yeah. It's going to be really tough. It's yeah. going to be, if you do it, you're a very good salesman of your own skills. Yes. And however, the PhD with in EE who ends up changing button colors. Well, changing that button color, if it increases sales by 5%, that is a huge impact to a company. Exactly. And you know, you can yeah. basically say, well, I'm I'm the color expert and I made this happen <laughs> and I deserve a small fraction of that 5%. <laughs> and by the way, that's a hundred thousand hundred million dollars a year in sales. And so I should get, you know, a two hundred thousand dollar bonus or whatever the equivalent would be. And it's just like, oh shit. Mm. Like <laughs> you know, like, is, and yeah. yeah. I thought that the market, if it was going to happen, if the market, if the software market was going to be flooded with people, it already would have happened. And 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 if the market gets flooded, then potentially that drives down prices. You know, they got ten million programmers coming out of India and and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And they're all pretty good, right? And you know, it can flood the market and drag down prices. But I, if that was going to happen, I think it would have already yeah so, i think it would have too yeah i think that's right yeah yeah i think the 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 hunger in the marketplace for yeah. more software is it that has not slowed down and that has only increased i think and so it's like right. oh okay well <laughs> yeah can you guys crank up the number of people that enter the industry because we could actually use even more than we thought we could use last year <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. oh turns out there's a lot of buttons to be to be made different colors 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, button colorizers. Uh, yeah. Uh, Interesting data point on all this, right? Yeah. So I could I could make an argument as well, and I'll stop talking about this because this is, again, just beating dead horses here. I think some of this, you know, so like other things that may have been impacting why EE, say like why salaries may have been a little bit flatter than a software engineering type yeah. of thing or why there's fewer opportunities. And one thing that I think is very legitimate is outsourcing, right? That was a right. that was a significant trend in the 90s. And, you know, right or wrong, it happened. And it's, it's a thing. Well, one of the responses on Twitter uh, to, you know, me posting this thing, it was uh, Naomi Wu, who's in Shenzhen. And she said, they can't get enough qualified EEs in yes. Shenzhen. And I was like, whoa, that's like yeah. the opposite then. So like that's what Altium found out the hard way. They moved their company right. to China, thinking that they could get all these high quality, low low cost software engineers. Uh, failed miserably. You you can either get good software engineers or voluminous uh, cheap ones, but but <laughs> yeah, you can't get good cheap ones, right? Yeah, you you yeah. just can't. And if you do, they're not loyal at all, right? So they'll stay. Well, this six was actually she was off. saying so, hardware engineers. Yeah, so yeah, that was... I know. But but in the oh, software okay, okay. space, like you know, that's what I'm saying. Like China, India, places like that. Yes, you can get. You know, <laughs> yeah, there's millions of them, right? But you know, are they any good? Like, are they just know. you know oh, an average software graduate? And yeah, they can sort of cut some code, but they're not brilliant. I'm very separated from the the you know the Shenzhen market. I'd love to have someone like Naomi or other people. You know, if people know others that are you know in Shenzhen and able to communicate over to us. We'd love to have have them on, have some chats. That I think it's fascinating stuff. And so, uh, oh, so the other part of that though is she she said it's not to the point where they're paying enough that they could you know that you know maybe a new grad from the U.S. might move there and and work mm. for the amount of money. But she said it is to the point where they're outsourcing entire like wow okay. design work to like eastern europe or other wow. other places yep. because yep. basically there's such a need and you know they're, they they're probably going to pay a little premium just over what the the local yep. rates are but it's still worth it to get the work done and then moving up you know keep things moving yeah absolutely fascinating yeah yeah uh, this brings me I've, I've got kind of a d d similar related thing in the yeah. content creation business in the youtube mm. business i did a video YouTube's. on this yeah. in in, in okay. the youtube yeah, yeah there's there's all these new ai generated presumably i well mostly you know largely ai generated content channels and they're 10 times bigger than mine they they just take all of the mm content they take all the stock footage out there of you know elon musk's new thing new james webb space telescope thing they mash them all together they you know with some random script they mash all these oh yeah james webb space telescope found aliens you know and they mash these things together <laughs> and 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 they produce these videos and millions of people watch them millions of people and they have have this have this computer generated ai voice on top which is very realistic and and it looks like when you actually watch this video you click on it you know it's got a fantastic thumbnail and title and everything else spectacular you know so so you click and you watch it and you go wow this is really high quality production right and and but it, it takes you a while to figure out hang on this is kind of like bullshit. What did, this is all just mashed together. I'm, I'm being duped here. This is all, yeah, because yeah, it's high yeah. quality because it's stock footage all just jammed oh together, yeah. you know, yeah. with a random, you know, well, a semi Do you have an example script. you can you could send me? So I oh, guess yeah. you have that. Yeah. Well, I, I'll watch it later. I won't watch it live, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But, uh... I, I have done a uh, video on it. And what the hell oh. um, is this channel? Future Unit. Well, I'll go here. I'll, I'll send you the Future... Unity. I mean, it's going to get harder and harder. I mean, this is, I feel like this is kind of like popular media type of stuff, but like, yeah, it's going to get harder and harder to, because there's going to be a feedback system, right? And, and it's going to be harder to know when it gets to the BS level, right? And this yeah, is obviously, it, it actually takes that, you some time. And by, and by yeah. that time, you've already generated them income by watching that's right, exactly. the bloody thing. Yeah, and they get millions of views. It. Yeah, it's worth yeah. it for them. As I said, they got ten, this channel I just sent you, Future Unity, it's got 10 times the number of views I do. And it's just, I'm sure it's just somebody in, in one, some, some kid in India who's sitting there generating one or two of these videos per day, just mashing, oh yeah, Elon Musk discovered aliens, you know, and just mashes it together. It seems like a lot of these.
these videos are do, it do, finally do. happened and yeah what's yeah the... it, it finally happened it yes it finally happened you know and yes oh every, every, every day something finally happens like this there's new nuclear fusion staff, nuclear diamond staffing battery the facebook pages you know? of umpteen's uh, uncle umpteen uncles around the globe yeah <laughs> It's just yeah, I mean, but I mean, right, the, so, I mean the tech. Look what Elon did today. Yeah. So I've actually got to take my hat off to the people behind this, right? They're making serious coin on this, and they're producing, like, well, like as I said, no, technically this is garbage. on the this is, I, yeah, no, it's no. it's garbage, but it's taking this is a social real experiment footage, at best. Right? And it is oh, yeah. a it's, public disservice at worst. Oh, it is uh, yeah, no, no, no that's against, awful. But, but you have to eyes tap your seriously you have to tap you you have to tip your hat to tip them hat, yeah, that they're yeah, yeah. able to do this right and they get it to work it's just I mean, like dave humans uh, are stupid us included so <laughs> yeah i know it's just uh, mm, yeah anyway yep yeah. anyway so this is new so like people are generating yeah ai generation content hmm. you, you can get ai uh, bots that you know uh, generate videos for you and they're pretty darn impressive so Yep, that's yep. that's the future. It's just going to be flooded unless there's a way to sort of, you know, weed out this sort of content, I guess. Yeah, just so, yeah. listen for the squeaky Australian instead. That's how you know yeah, it's right. legit. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Right. Yep. You, yeah, you need to no, listen to no me AI for 40 would sound minutes like of me waffling. We all know about. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Dave Cad couldn't be generated by a computer. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. And and who else can make a 40-minute video that I just released on whether or not solar inverters draw power at nighttime? 40 minutes worth. Bingo. That's that's hot garbage. Nobody, nobody, would, no AI would make that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's a total huge actually, I, market of you know twenty thousand I mean, views I'm, for it. You know, I'm, I'm gonna watch it, Dave. <laughs> right. Damn okay. It. Yeah. Oh, man. Anyway. Got me again. Yep. AI. Yep. <laughs> oh, bloody hell. Yeah. Yep. It's unbelievable. Yep. And yeah, I've been duped into. You know, and I, I've been duped into watching like live shows. Like you know, it, it'll, it, this used to be all the rage like a year or two back. You know, I'd get an announcement on Twitter, uh, not Twitter, I'd get an announcement on my YouTube channel and pop up on Trending or something like that. Live SpaceX rocket launch. And I go, oh, I missed one. Oh, it's live now. Oh, like I, I didn't know about this one. So I click on it, watch it live. And then it takes me a few minutes to realize, hang on, this is just replayed footage from six it's months ago. a live ago. version of, yeah, someone playing a recording. Yeah, but yeah. they actually play it as a live video. But even though it's like pre-recorded garbage, and they filled, you know, and they were they were actually getting more live viewers than freaking NASA was at one point, right? Or, or and uh, SpaceX as well. They were getting more viewers because I don't know, yeah, it just trended yeah. in the algorithm, and people were, were watching this fake live show. Yeah, it's like yep. oh god, unbelievable. What's yep. the world coming to? Bloody virtual reality. Bullshit what is the now? world coming to? Thank you for know. that wonderful, yep. wonderful segue, David. Um, <laughs> I would like to bring up the Chips Act because we've been harping on about this. So we there was a period about two or three shows with Dave and I together in a row where we're like, oh my God, big chip company announced a new fab. Big chip company announced a new fab all in the US. And you know what's funny thing about that? Uh, what is the world mm -hmm. coming to? Well, when there isn't money coming from the drip feed coming from Uncle Sam, they're all like, <laughs> JK, we're not doing that. <laughs> So what's what's happened? Has it has it actually died just, in the ass? Yeah, well, what's, just what's U.S. politics on? crap, and it just hasn't gone through yet. Fine, whatever. Right. But the thing that pisses me off about this is like, so there, there is a news article that I'll link in about how basically chip industry split over Chips Act benefit to Intel. And here's the thing: Intel doesn't need any money, folks. <laughs> And also, we don't need more Intels in the world. Like, I know that, like, well, I, I don't know how much cash in the bank do they have. Who knows? I, I don't. I'm like, not. I'm like, not do you actually know, like know their financial I'm position? Saying, Are they cash I positive? I don't buy you Intel know. parts, Dave. I'm saying I'm trying to buy linear regulators, switching <laughs> regulators, and Intel is never going to make those. And I, I just, I don't think that we, you know, we already have a lot of Intel fabs in the world. We need some crappy low end stuff in the U.S. That's what I'm talking about, and so. This is my political message. Get me some linear regulators. <laughs> right. So you need chips for your farting gadgets. You don't need chips right. for your new iPhones. Is yeah. that what you're saying? I mean, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I think it's like, I think a lot of the, you know, when, when there are big, uh, you know, when governments are involved in this sort of thing, I think they're worried about like bleeding edge type of stuff. And like, okay, I get it from that perspective. We want to make sure that, you know, yeah. our national interests have 
the fanciest new AI technology versus other national interests. I get that. Fine. Whatever. But also, what about switching regulators? <laughs> Do I need to keep saying switching regulators? Because nobody's building them. Yeah. yeah, but there's still plants in the US that make those, right? No, that's I mean, like, really? Yeah, TI, TI unmothballed one of the plants they were going to mothball. Fine, yeah. but not really. I mean, like, that's not enough. And nobody's like, in terms of like the ones that are actually yeah, announcing and start, building start, new start, ones. Yeah, but that's what makes the headlines. I, I know. You know. You're right. You're right about that. Yes, I will agree with that. I will agree with that. Yes. What makes Buck Rogers go go up? Funding makes Buck Rogers go up from the you know the line from uh, a movie you probably haven't seen. I have not so, seen that one. No, I'm no. curious. Okay, I'll get your link. Hang on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mercury. The right stuff. You haven't seen the right stuff. Oh, you know, I, I no, I, no, I should, no, I should have. I've been Came told out many times I should have. Right stuff. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's only two, like three and a half hours. Long Two movies that came out the year I was born. So, right. uh, yeah, no, we've the, talked the about right the show this time. Yeah, you know yeah. what makes this thing go up, <laughs> bucks, mate. You know, no, yeah. The line is no bucks, no Buck Rogers, right? Mm, yeah, and yeah, yeah. and and in, Intel is the Buck Rogers, right? That's what gets the bucks. So you have to lead with these stories. You can't go, oh, yeah, yeah no, nobody, yeah. Joe, Joe, average. In the U.S., hasn't heard well, about the freaking thing. Texas Instruments, right? I, they don't give a I shit about analog devices. They don't you could talk about TSMC. That's fine. They're they're a foundry for all. You know, like they make they make TI parts, they make yes. ADI parts, they make they make microchip parts, they make them for everybody. And like, that's fine. They were yeah. talking about coming here. Why not talk about give them some money? I don't fine. know. Fine. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, because you have to decouple from China. Right. Yeah. You have to yeah. decouple at all levels, yeah, and you have to do it at all levels. You're totally right. But what what gets the bucks? As you said, like they're having trouble pushing this through, even with Intel. Right. Everyone knows Intel. Everyone has yeah. an Intel yeah. thingy. Yeah. Right. Yep. And yet they still can't try, and they're still having trouble pushing it through. Yeah. Funding. Well, that's right. Yeah. It's like yeah, the funding stuff is. That's enough. Yeah, try and do it with the smaller little, you know, <laughs> players who make their yeah. freaking linear regulators. You've got zero yeah. chance. Okay, so it's got to start somewhere. So now here is a, a callback to that early article about, like, losing talent. Like, okay, so say we're going to have more nationalized uh, chip solutions, which is mm -hmm. a, a way to say that sort of thing. I don't think there's enough... EEs. So say we were just doing no. Like, okay, if you had to do it, everything's got to be made you're in, in trouble, country. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I don't know how that works, but I don't think any of the, that article was actually about this sort of thing and being able to like pull all of the engineering work back with it. Right? It was more about like the mm -hmm. software engineers are you know or the software jobs are hoovering up the engineering, the electrical engineering talent. But I'm not sure there's any jobs that are coming back to the U.S. that would actually require it in a you know a more mm. nationalized version of electronics made in the U.S. of A. Right. Why is it all about the U.S.? What about Australia? Yeah. What about it? I mean, like Where's that's our bloody fabs. That's another great question. What Let's happens? bring them back. Oh, we didn't have any. Uh, yeah, you didn't well, have any. Well, well, we've got one. Yeah. Little that tiny like silicon on sapphire lab, I think. Oh, yeah, still yeah, going, yeah, you mentioned that. You know? yeah. yeah, but no. Nah. Yeah. Yep. Well, maybe you'll have to ask Jerry when she comes on again just how to make your own chips as right. well. Right, yeah. Oh. There you go. Did you see Sam, uh, former guest of the show, Sam Sam's Loof, he posted on Twitter about you can now no. buy... He reckons, and he'd know. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Right? He, he reckons yeah. that you can buy all the equipment you need for a five nanometer fab on Alibaba for half a million bucks. Five nanometer? That's what he said. Five nanometers. I don't. I, I'm having a hard time no. believing the five nanometer. Most fabs well, aren't well, even well, at well, five yeah, nanometers. Yeah, well, you can probably do it at the individual. No, you can probably do it at like yeah. you know, you can make you know a few transistors and stuff. Oh like that. man, kids these you know. days and their yeah, their kids these tweets days that get me. people all riled up. You know, <laughs> Sam's like, but, but, but it's interesting. Now. He said. You know, like, like there's five <laughs> machines, like you put days. links to like five yeah. machines that you can buy wow. right on the shopping cart, put them in there, right? So, so if he got funded, you know, if I said, well, when's the uh, well, yeah, let's just get, coming, a, let's get him right? some, yeah, <laughs> yes, there's get some crowdfunding happening, yeah. and he can literally put them in his shopping cart, they would turn up, 
right? If they're shipping, it'd be insane. a killer, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, and he could set up a five, and technically he reckons it's capable of five nanometers, right? I think he's, I so, think he's just challenging us. I think he's like, yeah, give me some cash. I'm going to make, I'm going to make some chips. No, but it's fascinating, right? It's actually possible. Like, like you can't make them at huge scale, but, but technically you can make them, these now. Right? You can churn Alibaba, them out. A bunch of Alibaba things. Okay. So we've got yeah. opto. So he's got a scanning electron microscope. Definitely yeah. need that for inspection. Okay. He's got a CBD low pressure chem- chemical vapor deposition. Got to do that for your oxide layers, of course. Mm-hmm. How, how does your photo imaging happen? How does your mask stuff wondering. happen? I'm not, I'm not how do you actually make yet, the so mask? This is, said, see, this is the thing. You can't make them at mass yeah. scale, but I assume it's got a little uh, you know, gun where the, you, know, you can scan things and you can drill yeah, like your own UV little style. parts. And, yeah, 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 right. yeah. So Sam's been working on a at home like uh like photolitho but was doing it with i think it was i think it was a rastered version it was like it was like a right. beam bent yep. from a uv source or something like that yes and then so he, also, raster, he rastered yeah. uh, he xy rastered it rather than like actually make a mask and do yeah. it right is that yes. is that right yeah I, and I think so. That's, yeah. and, and that's, I'm sure, that's what he's talking about here, right? Because you can't make a five nanometer mask, right? And then, you know, well, do they, like a thousand chips at once, right? That's just not going to happen. Yeah, none with, of the stuff know, that he's talking about is at work. any kind of volume for sure. No, like no, even just the no. size of these chambers. But, but still, so it's, let me it's go through the other ones he linked. They, yeah, go. Yeah, a physical vapor deposition, vacuum coating. So that's basically if you wanted to put tungsten on a thing, that's kind of like if people want an introduction to that. Mr. Ben Krasnow of Applied Science, he's done that where he basically accelerates. He basically has an electron gun that ablates into t- a tungsten uh, right. thing. And then basically it like, it's basically like doing a small explosion of tungsten. And then it kind of like floats back down and coats the thing that you're trying to to uh, coat with the metal. Yep. Bec- yeah. Because CBD, chemical vapor deposition, if I'm remembering it properly, is you have a a plasma of like oxide floating and then you basically like snows oxide silicon oxide out of it yep so got it and then what's the last thing he had atomic layer deposition vacuum pvd this is just another version of it but atomic layers probably for the, for the actual gate so you can get like a thinner gate sort of thing okay anyway he he reckons yep he can do a five I think you're spot on chip. though dave he he did not show any Dry etching, any wet etching, no, or no, no, it's nothing uh, like that. Any imaging, <laughs> so so he's not going to be making them at mass scale. But in theory, he could make a small chip with a couple of transistors on it at five yeah. nanometer scale. Probably, I mean, I, you know, keep an that'd eye be that amazing. He's, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, yep, yeah. <laughs> all he needs is the money. All, all he needs all is he the needs. money, and he's off. He's yep. he's off to the races, right? Yep. yep. Oh my god. Yeah, it's very cool. Anyway. Yep. Yep. Love it. Good old Sam. We'll have him back on sometime soon. Yep. All right. We've got five minutes left. What's the uh, dregs of the show? Uh, Supercon is coming back. uh, So I'm going to try and go to that. Uh, That is Hackaday Supercon in Mm -hmm. Pasadena, California. That's real. None of this virtual. That's right. Yeah. Remoticon was the uh, the remote one. And uh, they're actually doing in person again. It should be. November three, four, five, which is a so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you'll happily go to these conferences and pick up COVID, but you won't go to the cinema to watch Top Gun and have the experience of your lifetime. What is going on? That's Something big, is wrong here, dude. That's a big. That's a big swing, Dave. I gotta it's, say. I, come on, come You're on. Right. You're right. Going yeah, to watch you Tom Cruise to go to a huge fly some planes right? instead of going to connect with my friends and new friends uh, over the course of three days. In a hack, hacker utopia. Uh, yes, those are, those are those are equivalent things. Even though I could totally, totally just probably yep. watch Top Gun on the way to the thing. No. I don't. No, it's I don't the get experience. it. Like, so my friend is all about like you have to go watch Dune at the theater. I get it. Like big sound, whatever. And you know, I'm going to tell you the same thing that I told him. I can just move the phone closer to my face and oh, boom. Phone. It is. Oh, it God. is. It is the. <laughs> It was like having it's like oh. having an IMAX screen, Dave. It fills up my entire vision. I move the entire phone closer to my face. Oh God, I weep for the future. That's oh. right. Yeah. Oh. I suck on it. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. no, no. All no, of no. all of the A V like purists out there just like cringed as well. 
No. I, that's the thing. I just don't care. I don't care about the experience thing. Like, I don't. I no, don't you're missing out on life, dude. I'm literally not missing out on life. I just told you I'm going to go to a conference and meet humans and hang out with humans, Dave. That is life. Not not watching Tom Cruise fly airplanes. Pro tip. Pro tip. I, you can do both. I know I could do both. I'm not going to do both. <sighs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Unbelievable right. indeed. What else have we got? If you're going to be there, please let me know. I would love to meet up. Also. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. No, I'm not. Not you. I know you're not going to be there. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah, be Yeah. Talk about someone who's who who could watch Top Gun like four or five times on the flight over. You'd have more than enough time to do that sort of thing. And no, I don't want to fly to LA. No, because it's a shit experience. Yeah, I know, but but I'm just saying you'd have a lot of time to watch Top Gun, Top Gun Maverick. Right, so I can have I can have break the in, double I can have the double shit electric experience. Boogaloo. No, the, the double watch. shit experience of being on a stuck in a tube for, totally. <laughs> for like, you know, 15, 16, 16 hours, hours. hours or whatever. Yeah, totally. And then yep. get the sucky experience of the seat and the crappy little screen and audio on the back. Wow. Yeah, I'm so You get to yeah, hang I out so with me at the end, that. Dave. Oh, that's that's the life experience it. right yep. there. That's, yeah. yep, yep, totally. You would All have right. a good time. I'm just saying. Yep. <laughs> All right. But if you're if people are going, please let me know. I'd love to meet up there. Oh, what else is on the list? Matt from A to Z, uh, ASIC. Oh, I forgot the name of his thing. I feel terrible about that. It's ASIC, zero to ASIC course. Oh, right. Yes, cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 So he has a podcast yeah. around that as well. If you don't follow his YouTube channel, very highly recommend it. Nice. Matt went to the Free Silicon Conference and recorded some some stuff there. Recommend that. You know, it's like yep. Yep. like all of these conferences. It's really interesting, actually. And there's another thing on here about Risk Five as well from Spectrum. You know, there's just like people just like building processors every single day, like by themselves, even to the point where it's like you know, there's there's so much like IP out there, and the tool chains are so. And I, you know, I guess I I should step that back a little bit people have been doing this at universities for a long time but like right. yeah, the yeah. scale <laughs> and like the deployability after the fact and like it's right. just it's it's a it's a fun time you know this risk five stuff it's very fun if people aren't always already paying attention to it please do i think it's worth keeping you know let that tweak your ear anytime you hear about risk five mm-hmm. this uh you know this uh spectrum article is a little apocryphal about it being about guns oh guns for raspberry pi I thought it was about being in guns. I totally read that wrong. <laughs> but, but basically, you know, there's larger and larger RISC V based processors as well. And I will remind our listening audience the mistake Dave and I made for probably the first, up until recently, uh, is that RISC V is an instruction set architecture. It's not a processor. So if you design yes. a processor from scratch, it would be compliant with the instruction set architecture, which means you'd have a decent chance of having a compiler being able to write code for your target, but it would still be your own design. It's not an open source processor, although there are open source processors that also talk RISC-V. Got it. I think the real share, here's a here's a graph for people should, that it would be interesting is like the number of chips internal at, uh, at large semiconductor manufacturers, like well-known ones, how many of those are RISC-V based? Hmm, okay. Like risk, like Espressif is leading in, leaning into it very heavily. So like the new yep. ESP32 C5 is a risk five based Wi-Fi and Bluetooth processor. And it's got, it's also interesting because it's also got dual core or dual frequency. So it's one of the first like accessible chips that I've seen that has like 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz Wi-Fi networks that it, it you know, it actually can serve up. But it's yeah, but that's got nothing five. to do with the Risk Five. But. Totally nothing to do with it. That was just another <laughs> thing that was interesting yeah. about it. But all Risk Five and like so, Espresso still makes stuff with uh, Extensa cores, which is the original ESP32, and they their tooling you know works for both uh, Risk Five and and Extensa. But they're leaning into it. Other ones that I know about is like Microchip has some parts that have it. Who else? We had Sammy on the show from. Can't didn't, remember. Didn't know about FNX. microchip. Yeah, microchip has the Polar Fire Ice. Oh, okay. Uh, thing. Yeah. No, not F. Fenix. is who I was thinking of. Sammy. That's not who it was. It was uh, 
Brian from an FPGA, the EOS 3 or something like that. Um, that, I think, has a risk 5 on it, maybe? No, never mind. That's the open toolchain thing. It's confusing, but I think that is going to be the, the tracker over time is how many of the big companies do it. So if we start to see, like, if TI puts a risk 5 that I think will be a banner level moment, right? And I think it's mm -hmm. likely that they'll do it for smaller stuff, right? They'll do it experimentally. They'll see it as a potential cost savings, you know, from licensing right. IP from ARM, that sort of thing. I think as once we see more and more of the large chip companies that already make micros, so yep. like a so microchip doing it, they're not getting rid of their other. I don't think they're going to get rid of the other product lines, but I think that no, that will <laughs> be a, a marker of some, uh, you know, a shift, a potential shift. So I would say like if Silicon Labs does it at some point, that would be interesting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, we'll see how it all works out. Cool. All right. We'll see if it comes to consolidate across all the different manufacturers or not. It'll be interesting. We come back in five years time. And well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they could be Everyone's everywhere. They could be nowhere, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. who knows? Yeah, yeah. Oh, actually, Silicon Labs is a sponsor, I believe. Maybe they're members. I think that's the other thing too. They're all dipping their toes in because they're like, "Well, right. what is you know, like this is important." Yeah, maybe. I think, I'm, I'm sure they're all thinking about it. I yeah. think it's a good way to to yeah. recruit new talent. You know, you think about like again that same article we were talking about. Like, you're trying to recruit talent in a somewhat shrinking market. Well, if all of the researchers are interested in Risk Five. You know, you probably help sponsor that conference to try and meet those researchers, but maybe also those researchers bring risk five into these companies, you know, like, or even, mm. you know, like, it's just, it's interesting how it all kind of shifts over time. Uh, we'll see, see where it all goes. We'll find out. Yeah. All right. We'll find out what's, what, what happens in the next, next week, in the next riveting yeah. episode. Next time. Well, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned. I'm sure folks. it's all changed. Same time, same bat channel. For the next episode of the Amp Hour. Talking about the same stuff as last week, mostly. <laughs> yeah, the same stuff as the last decade. That's right. <laughs> Come on. Really? I mean, how much has changed over the last decade? Well, I guess a lot. I guess a lot. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess a it, lot. It, it'd be interesting to go back through all our old shows and like stuff we were talking about oh and see God, how it, stuff has actually progressed. See I if have. It's, died. it's a lot yeah. of the same stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of that's on us, you know. You yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, totally. We haven't totally. gained many more stories, you know. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> that's the, that's... Yeah, it's all the same shit. Different yeah, smell. It's yeah. Different. Yeah, yeah. We smell <laughs> more mothbally now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'll smell you again next time. Yeah. Well, if you smell that wrong smell, <laughs> don't forget to flip around your soldering iron. You're probably grabbing the wrong end. <laughs> all right, and we'll expect your Top Gun review next time. Yeah, that's right.